Welcome to the Stitch Sessions, and it's so good to see you guys. I don't usually get on camera much these days, but uh, I thought that we would do something a little different today. Now, for those of you that are new here, my name is Karen, and I love everything to do with crochet and crafting with crochet. And to all of my regular crochet friends, welcome back. It's always good to hang out with you guys. Now, I was going through my stash and just kind of cleaning things out a little bit, and a lot of times I come across yarns that I really just want to finish up and I want to do something with just to kind of get it out of my stash. So I thought today's video would be a good idea or a good time to play a crochet game that I call crochet chicken. And I'm sure we've all played this game before. And that is when you have an undetermined amount of yarn and you think to yourself, can I make a whole project out of this? And today I am going to attempt to make a project out of this. This is all I've got left. Now this is the Craft Smart yarn and you generally find this at Michaels. And I, I would say I have probably less, just less than half of this skein left. So this skein comes in a 120 gram amount which is 214 yards or 196 meters. So I am going to attempt in today's video to see if I can squeeze out a pair of fingerless gloves out of this. And we're just in the very last few days of September. So the mornings are crisp, the evenings are cooling down. And to my surprise, a couple of winters ago, I had made my friend a pair of fingerless gloves. And every time she went out, she liked to go watch hockey games. Every time she went out, a different person would ask her, where did you get those gloves? So she would say that her friend made them. And uh, I found myself having another little <laughs> mini side business, crocheting all these extra pairs of fingerless gloves. I like, I really had no idea just how popular they are. And um, my aunt in Salisbury, many of you have met her. I've done a crochet conversation with her a couple years back. And it's in the... It, and you can find that in our Stitch Sessions Conversations playlist on this channel. And she is she sews and she does a lot of craft shows. And she also said that fingerless gloves are always a hit. She sells out of them all the time. So I thought, well, I don't have that much here. And fingerless gloves are pretty popular. So I thought let's try it out. Now, what do you guys think? Leave it for me in the comments before you finish watching this video. Do you think I'm going to be able, not much here, do you think you're gonna, I'm going to be able to squeeze a whole pair of fingerless gloves? I don't know. I think I can. I think I can. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's get started and see if I can do it. Okay guys, so let's do this thing. So this is the yarn. It is a medium four weight yarn that I'm using. Generally, that's kind of what I recommend for gloves and projects like that. Could you use a light number three, a lightweight number three? You could. I just find that the medium four is, is just the right amount and it's especially good for kind of insulation and things like that. It is an acrylic yarn. You can certainly use wool, of course. And uh, like I said, this is what I've got left of this skein. And just out of curiosity, in case you're wondering, this color is clay ombre. You've seen me use this actually several times now in our uh, Sienna pillow project, as well as uh, last year's uh, Christmas stocking project. So I, I really like this color. It can really lend itself to fall as well as to like Christmas holiday season type. So that's the yarn and the hook size I'm going to be using for this project is going to be a 5.5 millimeter hook, which is also known as an eye or a size nine. And always make sure that you have a pair of scissors to snip your yarn and a yarn needle to sew in your ends at the end. Remember, a yarn needle is different than a thread needle. It's got a much larger eye there. Okay, guys, here we go. Let's dive into this. 
Okay, now because I, I don't know how much yarn I have to work with, I'm gonna keep the design as simple as possible and use stitches that are as simple as possible so as to conserve my yarn. So I don't wanna use anything like puff stitches or cluster st stitches, anything like that that would eat up a lot of yarn. So I'm just gonna stick to a simple basic stitch and the, the simplest would be a single crochet stitch, but I'm actually gonna use the linked single crochet stitch. And it's, it uses the same amount of yarn as a single crochet stitch does. It's just, um, it creates a nice cozier fabric, which is perfect when you're making things like gloves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin by placing a slip knot on our hook, just like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain up however number of chains it's gonna take you to wrap around your hand. So this is very customizable to any size. You can make this for adults, you can make this for children. Super easy, basic design. So I'm just gonna start chaining up a little bit here. Okay, so I've chained up a total of 25 stitches and I've wrapped it around my hand here and it is very very comfortable almost kind of too loose but that's okay because as you crochet a little bit sometimes your work tends to tighten as your gauge moves along so now that we've got the number of chains that we need we are going to join our chains into a ring and of course I'm making mine for an adult so if you're making yours for a child you're going to want to wrap it around that child's hand I, I would say 25 chains, anywhere between actually 22 to 25 chains is an average for an adult size glove. So I've done a few gloves now, so I tend to end up with the same number of chains. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our work is not twisted and we're gonna find that very first chain. We're gonna insert our hook and we are going to slip stitch into that chain. And now we're gonna have a ring, just like that, okay? Now what's uh, really interesting about this design is I'm actually gonna work it from the top downward. A lot of times you'll see people starting from the cuff and moving up, um, but there's a lot of different ways you can create gloves or mittens. But with the fingerless, I'm gonna start from the top up here. So what we're gonna do for round number one is we're just gonna do basic single crochet stitches. So what you wanna do is you're gonna chain one and right back into that chain where you slip stitched, we're gonna single crochet. So we're gonna place your hook in there, pull up a loop, and single crochet. And that is what you're gonna do into each and every single stitch all the way around. Now, for those of you that have a little bit more experience and want your edge to be a bit more finished or finished off, I'm gonna just take that stitch out and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So the front of your chain looks like this. When you turn it over, you've got these bumps in the back. And for this project, I'm gonna work into the back bumps and that will give you a nice finished edge along the top, okay? I'm just trying to get that tail out of the way. So we're gonna turn our work over and basically we're just gonna go into the very first bump we see, which is right there. I'm gonna help my hook along, insert it. And then I'm just going to pull up a loop, yarn over and single crochet, okay? So I'm gonna go into the next bump. So just double check, see that's the front of the chain and that is the back. So the next bump would be right there. So I'm just gonna insert my hook and single crochet. Okay, so I'm gonna do that into each and every bump all the way around my ring. Okay guys, so I have 25 stitches all the way around. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna find my very first single crochet, which is right there. So I'm gonna insert my hook and I'm gonna slip stitch to join my round. Just like that. Okay, round one is complete. And so this is now your beautiful finished edge. See that? 
I just love how that looks. And you'll already see, or you should probably notice, that it's already kind of snuggled in a little bit more. It's still really comfortable. See that? Really nice and comfy. Now, if you want yours to be a little bit more snuggled in, perhaps go down a hook size. Or if you are naturally a tight crocheter, then uh, you will be just fine with your 25 stitches. So now we're gonna move on to row number two, which is gonna be the repeat for the rest of the glove. And basically we're gonna use the, the linked single crochet stitch. So it doesn't take any extra yarn than a regular single crochet stitch does. Where am I here? Oops, there we go. Um, but it's gonna create a nice denser fabric. So here we go. So for round number two, you're going to chain one and then you're going to go right back into that same stitch where you slip stitched and you're just gonna put a regular single crochet. So at the beginning of every round, you're always gonna start with a single crochet, okay? Just like that. Now when you create a single crochet, there's two legs to this stitch. There's these, which is the vertical loops it creates. So you've got the left side and then you've got the right side, which is right there. So in order to link your single crochets together, it, before you go into that next stitch, what you wanna do is you wanna insert your hook into the left leg first and then insert into the next stitch. You'll pull up a loop and it actually looks like you have three loops on your hook, which you do, but this middle one comes from the previous stitch. You will then yarn over and pull through all three. And that is your linked single crochet stitch. And it creates this pretty little kind of texture here. Now, you've seen me use this stitch in other projects before, like uh, the basic dishcloth and the beach tote I did two summers ago. And I'll leave a link for those in the description box down below if you're curious as to what other projects you can create using this stitch. And by the way, we do have another fun little mini series coming up just in time for the holiday season that you will be seeing a lot of this stitch. So you're gonna get really good at doing the linked single crochet stitch. Okay, so now to continue on, I'm gonna find always the left leg. I'm gonna insert before I go into the next one. Now I'm gonna go into the next stitch. Whoops, yep, there it is there. Pull up a loop, three loops on the hook pull through all three. Left leg first, then the next stitch, and pull through all three. Okay, isn't that cute? All right, that's all you're going to do. You're gonna do a linked single crochet all the way around. I'm just gonna meet you at the end of round number two, just for those of you a little newer just to kind of talk about ending that round and continuing further rounds. If you're more experienced, then all you're going to do is repeat round number two. So you're gonna create a length that's gonna start, so if you're gonna start from above your knuckles, it's gonna go from here all the way until that tube you're creating hits your thumb. Now, for those of you that wanna cover your knuckles and start maybe about here, then your measurement is gonna start from here and you're gonna crochet your tube all the way until it hits your thumb area. So essentially that's what we're doing, we're crocheting a tube. All right, so you're off to the races. And then for those of you a little newer, I'll be back in just a few seconds. Okay, so for my newer crochet friends, I have one stitch left. So I've come all the way around. So I'm gonna go into that leg and this is the last stitch I have here. This is my 25th stitch. I'm going to pull through, okay? And now we're gonna slip stitch to join our round, but because this is a project where I really wanna make sure that my seam either gets hidden or stays nice and straight, I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do. And I picked this up, I forget where I saw it, of course I found it on YouTube, but normally we would just kind of insert into the very first stitch like I did in the row below or the round below, I should say, and then you pull up a loop. But when we wanna really keep that seam straight, we're gonna take our hook out and we're gonna insert our hook into that stitch, but from behind, okay? So you insert from behind 
and then you bring that loop back and you pull it through just like that. And it just gives you a very seamless join of, or seamless look. Okay, so right now, if you didn't see the loop, you really wouldn't know where your round began and where it ended. And that's what I really, really like. So that is how for this project, I'm going to end every round. I'm going to slip stitch it by pulling the loop in from behind. Now, when you start every new round, you will always begin the same way we did previously. You always chain one and then you go into the very first stitch right here and you start with a regular single crochet stitch. Okay, just like that. And then you start inserting into the left leg and into the next stitch. So this part now you will have had a little bit of practice with and that is what you're gonna to continue to do, okay? And you're gonna keep doing this for rounds and rounds until, as I said before, you get the length that you desire for your glove until that tube just hits before your thumb, okay? So you're off to the races, you've got your little ring happening, it's gonna turn into a tube, and I'll meet back up with you once you hit your thumb, and I hope I don't run out of yarn. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I have completed a total of nine rows, and I just realized this is the first time I've actually used this stitch in the round. So it does create a slightly different look than if you were turning your work, and it's kind of cool actually. So you can really see that it's linked across the way, and then if you turn it inside out, you've got these ridges here, which I think look pretty cool too, so you could actually kind of ask yourself, do you want to have the right side facing or the wrong side facing? Now you can see here on the wrong side where we did that kind of uh, invisible join, we'll call it. So on this side, you can really see it. It does lean a little bit, but when you turn it this way, it's not as prominent. See that? So it's, it's, it kind of blends in a little bit more. So now for me, I've reached my length. I've done nine rounds. I just kind of try it on. And so you want to go see how it's just hitting right at the crook of my thumb here. And so for me, yep, yeah, it just barely covers the knuckle. When I bend, you can see the knuckle there. So I think that's a good length. I know a lot of people like the fingerless gloves so that you have access to your phone and things like that. So this is where I'm going to stop. And now we're going to create the thumb hole and continue until we get to the wrist. Now, one thing to keep in mind, although it is very slight, you kind of want to work it so that the seam is always on the, on the palm. I mean, that's just kind of the general rule that I do. So that way on the outside, you've got this really beautiful seamless look. So what we're going to do, since I have it on my right hand, I'm going to work it as if I am going to create this one for my right hand. So that means I'm going to start, and because we're working this way, I'm going to start creating the thumb hole first and then continue stitching around. If you were doing it on this hand, see, just like that, you would, whoops, so your seam is here. So if you put it on your left hand, because the direction we work in is this way, we would stitch first around and then create the thumb hole at the end. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna take you through doing the thumb hole now. And because I'm gonna do my right hand first, and it's gonna sit like this, I am going to do the thumb hole first and then stitch around. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to now chain up approximately six or seven, and depending on how comfortable you want your thumb hole to be, you'll experiment with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chain up seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then I'm going to skip the next four stitches. So we have one, two, three, and four. And into the fifth stitch, I'm going to single crochet. Okay, so that creates a hole there. Now you might think, well, why did you skip four in particular? 
So I skip four because I know it takes four stitches for my tube to kind of go around my hand here. So I'll show you what I mean. So I've got this here. And basically from just before where the thumb starts, cause I don't want it to be right here cause that'll be really tight for my thumb. Just right back here, I started counting the number of stitches it would take to go from here just to the other side here where the knuckle of your thumb is. And for me, that was approximately four stitches. Now let's see if I was correct. And we're gonna place our thumb in here. And so you just wanna see if it feels comfortable. Do you feel constricted? You kind of want it to be able to come out a little bit. It doesn't necessarily have to come out that far. You just want to make sure that it feels, it doesn't feel too constricted. And I feel okay, actually. So I'm going to turn it a little bit this way. And, and of course, so the number of chains is fine that I skipped. It's just the number of chains here that you're going to crochet. I think I might... It feels okay, but I think I'm gonna chain another chain. Let's see. So that'll bring me up to eight chains. Doesn't sound like a lot, but sometimes it can make a difference. So there's eight. And then I have one, two, three, four into the fifth one. I'm going to single crochet. So remember it's a single crochet, not a slip stitch. Just like that. Okay, then I'll try it on again. And of course, make sure that stays nice and tight there. And there we go. And I think, yep, yeah, that feels pretty good. So you see, you have nice range of movement and that's what you want, okay? So for me, I chained eight and I skipped four chains here. So once you've created your thumb hole, here's what we're gonna do next. We are now gonna continue all the way around with our linked single crochet stitch. So that's why I did a single crochet here for the opening. So you just go into your left leg there. The other thing too you wanna be careful is, normally when you turn your work, all like in a flat project, this stitch is fairly stretchy. Now it does have some stretch, but it is certainly not as stretchy as it normally is when you work it in a flat project. So just be careful as you stitch. It's so easy to inadvertently start stitching tighter as you work through a project. So just keep that in mind and try to keep it nice and relaxed as you go along. Or if it might help you, go up a hook size. So I'm using a 5.5. Maybe you want to go up to a 6 or even a 6.5 just to keep it nice and relaxed. But you don't want to go up too many hook sizes because then your work will just become a little bit uneven and wonky. So that is what I'm going to do all the way around. And then I'm going to meet up with you when we get to the armhole opening. Okay guys, so I have one more stitch left here in round number 10. And a lot of times when you're getting ready to join, you're gonna see this little stretched stitch. That's where we kind of pulled in from behind. So I try to pull it as tightly as I can, but it's kind of want to happen that way. But it is still a stitch, so I'm gonna work through it. And I'm just going to go under those loops and create my last stitch here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find that very first chain here and I'm gonna slip stitch to join, and I'm just gonna do it in the traditional manner just to make it easier here. Just like that. So now, round number 10 is complete, and we've created our thumb hole there, okay? So now we're gonna go on to round number 11, where we're just gonna continue working in the round. So at this point now, you've done the top portion, You've created the thumb hole. Where are you? You've created the thumb hole, okay? And now we're just gonna work the rest of the glove until you get to the wrist area. So we've picked up a few extra chains here. So now instead of 25 stitches, I'm now gonna have 29 stitches around. So remember, we skipped four, but then we added eight stitches. So that's gonna give us, so when we skip four, 25 minus four is 21, but then we added eight chains. So 21 plus eight chains is 29. So I hope that makes sense for you. It's really important to understand the math because if you're doing this for a different size, 
you really want, want to understand why I now have 29 stitches. Okay, so let's go on to round number 11 just to get you over the hump of working across that chain. Okay, so like we begin every round, you're going to chain one and we're going to get you to go right back into that same stitch and just do a single crochet like we usually do. Okay, and then we're going to go in through the left leg. So this is going to be a linked single crochet just like before. The difference is now we're gonna be working into chains instead of stitches. So you just wanna make sure you find the very next chain. Now it doesn't really matter if you wanna work into the back bumps, you can. For this opening, I'm just gonna work into the front here of the chain. So that's the first chain there. I'm gonna pull through and single crochet. So left leg, find the next chain. So we're working into chains now instead of stitches. And there you go. So you should end up doing eight of these. If you're following along with me, I had eight chains. So I'm gonna have eight of these linked single crochets across this chain. Okay, so I'm just going into my last chain here just like that. So see, now you've got a substantial kind of support here around that chain. And now we're just gonna continue working into the very next stitch. So I'm gonna go into my left leg here and I'm gonna find the top of the very next stitch. So that's the chain and the stitch is right there. As always, if you're ever uncertain at the end of your round, make sure to count your stitches. So there we go. And now we just continue on this part, easy peasy. You've had lots of practice, linked single crochet all the way around. So just taking that out there. So there we go. So now that opening is pretty substantial. And again, I really like to keep trying this on. Oh yeah, so that feels really nice now that I've got some stitches around there. It doesn't feel as strict. There we go. Pretty cool. Okay, so keep doing your rounds as before. Remember when you get to the to the end, you always slip stitch to join and continue on. So I'm gonna keep going until I hit my wrist area there. Okay, so I have completed round number 16. And so my glove is looking like this and I can try it on and it's really nice and comfortable in the thumb. I'm very happy with that. I like the length and it's just getting to my wrist portion here. Now I am getting a little bit nervous though. Okay guys, so I'm getting a little bit nervous about my yarn because this is basically ooh, what I have left. Doesn't feel like a lot. So I'm making the executive decision. I'm gonna snip my yarn here. So like I've shown you, it does fit just perfectly over my hand. So this is kind of my strategy uh, with this game of chicken is I always try and kind of work it out to see how I can balance out the yarn that I do have. So I'm gonna snip my yarn and then I am gonna go ahead and create a second one and take it exactly to this around here, round number 16 for me. I am hoping that I can at least get a second one exactly like this. Then if I still have some left over, then I'm gonna use it to create the cuff for each of these uh, gloves. I still have faith that I, I can do it, I can do it. What do you guys think? Ooh, do you think I'm gonna make two full gloves with the cuffs? I don't know, I don't know, I'm hoping so. Okay. So for now, I'm gonna take a bit of a break. I'm gonna have something to eat. I've been working on this for a little while. I'm gonna go at it um, tonight. I'm gonna have a little bit to eat. I'm gonna do the second one tonight. And then I'm gonna check in with you guys tomorrow. And that is when you'll know if I made it to the end or not. And if I have a cuff, fantastic. If I don't have a cuff, uh, we'll see how far I got. And if I don't have enough yarn, then uh, number one, I'll have to admit defeat, which is not gonna be fun. And number two, I will show you guys what I will do to make sure that this project is indeed complete. So 
I'm going to grab something to eat and I will see you guys tomorrow for the check-in. Hi guys. So it is the next day and I have done the second glove. So I have made two of these gloves. Now you can see this one has a thumb opening and that is because I've been experimenting with how much yarn I have left over. So there it is. So you can see it covers along the top and I stopped just short of the wrist. So I know that I can get one thumb done and I actually know that I can get two thumbs done because I'll show you the little trick. This is all that I had left here, not much. So I, when I finished this second glove, I actually continued to create my thumb opening and then I took the other end of this stuff that was left over and I actually started creating the second one and that is a little trick that I do and I'm sure you guys have kind of done this as well. If I can start to see if I can even out the amount of yarn I have for both items. So I do know that I can do, so I've got the two gloves, which is great and I can do both thumbs and I do have still a little wee bit left. And I am wondering if I can, if I will be able to do the cuffs for both of these. So because I had such little yarn left, I did want to keep the design very, very simple and basic. And I'm getting pretty close guys. I think uh, I'm going to do it. Like I really had a feeling I could do it. So I'm going to now talk you through how we're going to do these thumbs. And uh, let's see where we stand once I finish this one. So I've done this one. I am going to snip off my yarn and then I'm going to show you this one here. Okay, guys, let's do this. So once you have both of your glove shell, I guess we'll call it done, we're now ready to do the little thumb portion. Now, some people like to just create this to be kind of like a wrist warmer and some people will just leave the thumb out. I myself am not a fan of that at all just because it's a quite a large gap here and it just looks, to me it looks funny. So I do like to do a little finishing round and again it's not long because it's meant to still expose the tips of the fingers. So if we can get to about the bend in the thumb we're good. Now I've done five rounds here and that's good for me. So that's the beauty of this project is you can adjust it to whatever size you're making it for. So you can adjust it as you go. So super easy, still working in the round. So we've got our little thumb opening here. And so what I would recommend is starting on the inside corner of your glove. So, and you can faintly see that that's where the seam is. So for me, that's my right glove. Okay, because I like my seams toward the inside. So I'm going to take what's a little left of my yarn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm just going to find an opening here, just somewhere on the inside corner. And then I'm going to pull a loop through and chain one to secure. Whoops, maybe won't leave it so long because I'm trying to conserve my my yarn here. So I'll make my tail just a smidge shorter and chain one. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to continue to stitch into every single stitch around that you can see. So I'm going to begin by placing a half double crochet into the very first stitch here. So I'm going to yarn over and right where I pull that loop through, I'm going to insert, and actually I'll see if I can work over part of that tail, just like that, and pull through. So I've got a half double crochet there. That chain one was just to help me secure my spot. And now I'm just going to find a nice spaces and stitches to work into. So I can say I've got some stitches here. So I'm going to continue with the linked single crochet. I'm going to insert through there and through, and then I'm gonna go into the next stitch. Now, sometimes you'll have stitches to work through, and sometimes you'll have spaces, like right around here, because we came around the bend there, 
Um, just try and find a nice space. What you don't wanna do is do that. See, if I insert there, it's only one loop and that's gonna be very precarious. So I like to always find something that has a little bit of substance. So I might kind of dip down into here where I know I'm gonna have two loops there, okay? Now, the number of stitches may vary. On this one, I ended up having 14 stitches around, just because in the corners there, that kind of creates sometimes a few extra stitches. So don't get too married to the fact that, you know, perhaps there are 11 stitches when you opened up this thumb hole, but then as you go along, you might end up with more stitches. The odd time you might end up with less, but usually you end up with a few more stitches. That's the beauty of customizable projects. So the main thing is just make sure that it looks nice and even, and whatever that count is for this first round should be then the same count remaining for the rest of the thumb. You just want it to look even, and you want it to fit nicely, okay? So I'm gonna continue around my opening here. So this is round one of my thumb, and I'm just gonna do, continue to do my usual a linked single crochet stitch. Okay, so I am just at the very end of my fifth round, and I'm just gonna do a regular little slip stitch here to end off, and I did it. I made it to the end of the second thumb, okay? And again, I'm not gonna leave too much of a tail. Just like that. And then I'm gonna weave in that end. All right, so we did make it to two gloves, guys. I am so excited about that. So we've got the two here. I've already woven in the ends of this one here. So you see, we've got the two gloves. We are ready to rock now. We still need a bit of a cuff here, as you can see. And so the game still continues because I have exactly this much left. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Now, realistically, am I gonna get two substantial cuffs out of this? No, um, but we're gonna keep going to see how long I can go. So like the way I did the thumbs, what I'm gonna do is I am going to go row by row. So I'm gonna start on this end and I'm gonna work one round and leave it. And then I'm gonna find the other end and work one round and leave it. So I'm gonna go one, one, two, two, and I'm just gonna keep going really until I run out of this yarn and I wanna see how many rounds I will have of my cuff. Now for my cuff, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep it really simple. We're still gonna use this single the linked single crochet stitch, but we are gonna turn our work. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna continue to give us a little bit of extra uh, stretch, and it'll just create a little bit of difference in the texture. So since I finished with this one, I'm gonna pick this one up. Maybe I can work over this tail too. So I'm just going to start at the bottom edge here and insert my hook. This is funny how this um, stitch, it ends up having three loops. So you see you've got the front, you've got the top, and you've got the back. So we are gonna go in right through there and pull that through. And chain one, okay? And then I'm gonna start with a half double crochet, as you guys have seen me do. Just makes it a little easier to see the loops. And then I'm gonna start doing my round. So this is round one of the cuff, just continuing on using the linked single crochet stitch. So I'm gonna go and do one round. When I'm done this round, I'm gonna pick up the other end, like I said, and I'm gonna do the other round. So I'm gonna go back and forth and let's see how many rounds I can do of my cuff. Okay guys, I did it. I did one round each for the cuff, which actually just blends in quite nicely. And guess what? This is all I have left of my yarn. So now when I put it on, obviously one round is not enough to create like a substantial cuff, but if you ask me whether or not I won this round of crochet chicken, 
I would say yes. One point for me, zero for the yarn. So I am really excited about this victory. I have used up the yarn all the way to the end. So what I'm gonna do though, just as an add-on, I'm, I'm still gonna add a little extra embellishment here just to give us a little bit more a feel of a cuff. So there you have it. So what I'll do is I'll actually just snip my yarn here. Okay, and then I'll weave in these ends. So there's that. And then there is this one. So that's how I keep it even. So I, I know that I can get to the end of each project. Okay, so that is what they look like. Just nice and simple, plain, basic. So I'm gonna weave in these ends and then I'm gonna bring in a little embellishment to our cuff. Okay, so I've woven in all my ends and are you guys ready for this? Are you ready? So I have some of this fur yarn and I bought this, oh, probably a couple of Christmases ago. They do tend to bring this out as the holiday season approaches, but I've always got this one left over. So this is the soft pink. I generally will use this as embellishments on things like um, stockings. So last year in the the simple stocking design that I did, I did the cuffs in this fur yarn. So I just thought for fun that this would look really good as a little cuff on these fingerless gloves. So I know it might be a little early in the season for fur, but uh, I just think they're gonna come out really, really great. And this color is actually called soft pink and I just think it brings out the red tones really nicely. So that is what I'm gonna do as a little embellishment for our cuffs. So again, I'm gonna start on the inside edge here. Now, the thing with fur yarn, if you are a new crocheter and you've never used this before, the thing about going to the store and seeing these yarns, they feel so lovely, but they really are a pain in the butt to work with because you cannot see your stitches. That's why I've had this, I mean, it's kind of gone all crazy here, but that's why I've had this same skein for like two years because I truly just use it for like the edgings of things because you're trying to make a whole project out of it. It's very, very tricky to see your stitches. So if you are pretty new, I just say pack your patience. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go up a hook size here for this one. I think I'm gonna get my 6.5 millimeter hook. Okay, there we go. This one will be, help us move through this yarn a little bit better. Okay, so I'm just going to insert my hook anywhere around here. And I'm gonna pull up a loop. Okay, and you can already see that the hook kind of gets hidden in there. So I'm gonna chain one to secure. Okay, and all I'm going to do is single crochet stitches. I'm not going to do the linked single crochet stitch because you can't even really see it, so it doesn't really matter. So you are going to go just into each and every single stitch, and you will, I'm going to work over that tail, you will single crochet. So I'm going to pull that up. See how even the loops, it's tricky to see? Yarn over and pull through. So just take your time here. Just find every single stitch here and single crochet all the way around. Okay, and I'm just doing my last stitch here. And then you're gonna slip stitch to join and this is where it gets really tricky. You kind of just have to feel for where your stitches are. Just give it a, a guess. And Whoops, I think that was just a chain one. Let's try in here, there we go. So you're gonna slip stitch to join and your cuff is complete. Now I'm just gonna try that on. And again, it's just meant to be a little embellishment and see, you can see this is stretching a little bit so I can already pull it down a little bit past my wrist and there you have it. So this is cute little little fur-like embellishment. If you want, you can do some along the top too. Like if you really wanted to now add some more kind of little add-ons to it, I'm not gonna do that just because then it's gonna really start covering up the fingers a little bit more and I, I like them to be, 
I like this, this amount here. So I have solved my little cuff issue and I'm gonna do the other one and then we'll be done. I am doing my happy dance. I did it guys. I crocheted a full pair of fingerless gloves from the remaining yarn I had. So yes, I did have to add a little embellishment here at the very end, but technically I did it using the yarn I had left over. So one point for me and a zero for the yarn. I am very happy. Okay, so my camera died. <laughs> so I just had to change cameras. So as I was saying, I am super happy with how these came out. I hope you guys have found this super easy and I hope it inspires you to play a little crochet chicken with some of your uh, leftover yarn in your stash. So this is a, another main thing that I'm hoping to do more of. So this was a round one of crochet chicken. And again, I think that I won this round. So I plan on going through a few more of the, the partial skeins I have left over in my yarn stash and really go through them. I'm actually not the type of person that likes to collect yarn and have it on display and have it lying around. Like I really want to go through it. And the reason is, is that way then I can go buy more guilt free. <laughs> so this is a great start to the cold weather season. Actually, I like how it looks on this camera a little bit better. Hopefully you guys can see the coloring nice and bright. So the red, how the ombre works with the, with the, um, with the fur, just love that. All right, guys. So I want to know, do you have a leftover, uh, skein of yarn or a ball of yarn? Do you think you can make a pair of these? Let me know. Actually, I am curious to see what colors, you know me, I, I'm all about the colors. I always want to see what colors do you guys use to create your projects? And if you had to do a little, embellishment like I did at the end. And what did you think about that little technique I used by using one end of the yarn to work on one glove and one end of the yarn to work on the other? It's my little way of kind of evening things out. Now, if you have any deeper questions about this project, as you know, you can always leave them for me in the comment box down below. And I always invite you guys to send me a direct email. If you prefer, you can send it to me at info at crochetcrafty.com. And you know what I'm going to tell you, come visit me on the website, crochetcrafty.com. There's lots of really great, fun, free goodies there for you. Lots of sizing charts, planning charts, garment templates, and uh, of course, free written patterns. So make sure to sign up for my monthly newsletter because in each issue, I gift you a free written pattern. And I am still working on stocking up more patterns in my Etsy shop, but you guys can visit me there as well at Crochet Crafty Canada. I know that the beach bag was a big winner this year as well as my Lemon Square Granny Square. That one has been very, very popular this year. And uh, so go and check that out at uh, Crochet Crafty Canada. As always, come say hi to me. I'm on Facebook and Instagram at The Stitch Sessions. I spend a little bit more time on Instagram, but you can visit me in both of those locations and make sure to tag me in your projects. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Next week is the start of... October. So you know what that means. The first Wednesday, we are doing a pillow project because this year's series is the Pillow Talk Crochet Series. So stay tuned for that. October's pillow is going to go live next Wednesday. And actually, in a not too distant future, like in the next week or two, hopefully if I can get it all ready in time, we are going to be embarking on a mini crochet series as we lead up to the holidays. And I'm starting it this early because it's it's a bit of a larger project and you'll need a little bit more time to work on it. And I want you to have time to have it ready in time for the holidays. So stay tuned for that. I've got lots of stuff coming up for you guys, all of my wonderful crochet friends. So thank you as always for joining me. I hope you have an amazing day. Happy crocheting. Take good care of yourselves as always. And I will see you guys in next week's session. Bye-bye.